creatures here below praise him above ye heavenly host praise father son and holy ghost mm -hmm. praise god from whom all blessings flow Cause you're the only answer my heart's been searching for So I'll praise you in the quiet And I'll praise you in the storm Praise God from whom all blessings flow Good morning. It's good to be together on this Thanksgiving week Sunday. Let's begin by standing and thanking the Lord together as we read scripture. Let us give thanks to God our Father for all his gifts so freely bestowed upon us, for the beauty and wonder of your creation in earth and sky and see. For all that is gracious in the lives of men and women revealing the image of Christ. For our daily food and drink, our homes and families and our friends. For minds to think and hearts to love and hands to serve. For health and strength to work and leisure to rest and play. Thank you, Lord. For the brave and courageous who are patient in suffering and faithful in adversity. Thank you, Lord. For the communion of saints in all times and places. Thank you, Lord. Above all, we give you thanks for the great mercies and promises given to us in Christ Jesus our Lord. To him be praise and glory with you, O Father, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let's sing together as we continue to worship.
Let's pray. God, we thank you this morning for many things, so many things, but most of all for who you are. This morning, we want to honor you in this time through our worship as we listen to you and pay attention to what you have to say to us. Lord, this is your time. Well, good morning again, church. I want to invite you to go ahead and take your seats, and we want to welcome you. If you don't mind, on the inside aisle, there is a black um, clipboard to take attendance, and if you would take that and pass it along, give us your attendance, and then just leave it in the outside aisle. Someone will pick that up later. We would appreciate that. You can also use the QR code to register your attendance and give us your information. If you're a guest here, we'd love to get your information and we thank you for coming uh, as well. Well, November 26 is kind of a full day here at Emmanuel. There are a number of different things that are happening. The first of which is that there is a Sunday school potluck at 9.15, and that'll be over in the fellowship hall, a Sunday school potluck. So make sure that you bring a, a breakfast item, a dish to be able to share. We're going to hear about what God has done in the classes that we've had in the previous um, nine, uh, 11, I'm sorry, 10 weeks, and then what we're going to do as a corporate teaching time during the season of an Advent. And so come share in some table fellowship with one another, hear some good stories, and hear what God's going to do next, um, beginning um, next week, or December 3rd with our classes. Again, that's November 26th. Also that evening at 5 o'clock p.m., we have a society meeting. Now you say, well, what's a society meeting? A lot of churches would say it's just our annual business meeting, and everyone is welcome to attend. We're going to talk about our budget for 2024 as well as um, give some updates on some projects, specifically our solar project. Everyone is welcome. However, only members of the church are allowed to vote, and so we would love for you to come and attend. It's at 5 o'clock p.m. Again, that's on November 26th. Our talent night is right around the corner. In fact, we have a whole series of Advent things that we're doing, and it's on our schedule. You can look at your bulletin for those things. But our talent night specifically, I want to draw your attention to, it is on December 10th. We have dinner at 5 o'clock, and then we have our talent show at 6 o'clock. And again, we say the word talent, um, we use that kind of sparingly. You really don't even have to have talent. 
Um, we would just love for you to be able to participate, have fun with it. But we do need to know if you are coming to do that. Um, and so if you would let us know by filling out the white card that's in your bulletin, drop it in either the offering plate or in the white box on your way out, or there's a white card in front of you, a connection card. You can give us your information and just let us know in the back that you're going to be using your talent. We don't, we're not necessarily wanting to know if you're coming to the dinner just yet. We want to know whether or not you're going to utilize your talent for that evening. You can also contact Jenny Ayers. Jenny is here. That's Jenny. And her contact information is in your bulletin and let her know. And it's always just a fun, fun time. A great, it's, a, it's another great soft opening uh, to church and to Jesus. So we encourage you to invite your friends as well. Again, that's on December 10th. A couple times last year, we made a what's called a quiet time journal. We did this for the season of Lent, and we did it during Pentecost as well. And we're going to do it during Advent. In fact, we have about 25 copies of, the, of this at the Ministry of Resources table, which is the table to the right of the women's restroom. And this will guide, this, this will guide your devotions and your uh, scripture reading and prayer time during the, the, the season of Advent, which again begins on December 3rd. And so, there, like I said, there's 25 of them out there. If we get rid of them all today, I will just make more. I'm happy to do that. Also in this quiet time journal, as well as a paper that's on the table next to it, is a two-year Bible reading plan that would begin in January. It's a two-year reading plan rather than the one-year reading plan, which can kind of be intense. And in those two years, you will read through the Old Testament once and the New Testament twice in those two years. And so that's out there as well. It's also in the Quiet Time Journal. So I encourage you to pick one up um, to supplement your devotion time during the Advent season. There are other announcements that are in your bulletin. Make sure you pick one up on your way out if you didn't pick one up on your way in. The Senior Christmas Luncheon, uh, we're still selling peanut brittle in November for our solar project. The Jesus Birthday Offering, again, all those are in your bulletin or in the Church Center app, so I encourage you to look at that. Nursery is available down the hallway to our right, and it is staffed at the 1030 service. If that's a ministry that would be a blessing to you, uh, you're welcome to, to use that. At this time, our children are dismissed to godly play. If you're between the ages of three years old and second grade, you can go right now and just head out and then go to your left. It says godly play over the archway, and there'll be someone to greet you. Again, ages three years old through second grade. As they're leaving, we are going to transition into a time of prayer. And so as we do that, Pastor Mark is going to come and he's going to lead us in prayer. And if you have something that you would like to pray about and you would like somebody to pray with you, I'll be over here on the right at this altar. I'd be happy to pray with you. If you have something you want to pray about, you'd just like to pray alone, and that's just fine. You can come over here to my left and pray there. Otherwise, we'll pray together in our seats here. Pastor Mark. Let's bow our heads together, and if you'd like to step out of your seat right now and come to the altar, you're invited to do so. God, we've been worshiping you and trying to honor you in this time through our songs as we have celebrated our community with a time of fellowship and even sharing these uh, announcements about family life, how you draw us together in community, and, and that's a big part of who we are. We aren't just persons, we're a people, and you call us together, and, and, and so we honor you uh, by, by coming together and loving each other as you have loved us. But Lord, this time, this prayer time is, is so special because we thank you that you are a God who communicates with us and cares about each one of us personally. Uh, you don't just hang out someplace off in another part of the universe and look in once in a while, but Bible says that you are a very present help in time of trouble. And so we come to you now, Lord, first of all, just thanking you for all the blessings you brought into our lives, but also aware of our needs. And Lord, we've all sinned, we've all fallen short, and, and none of us deserves your grace and favor, but we thank you that you love us. And we thank you that through Jesus Christ, uh, we can have a relationship with you, not because of what we've done, but because what you've done for us. Us that although our good deeds may, may please you, we can never earn your favor. That's a gift. So as we receive that gift, we also receive the blessing of knowing that you listen to us. So God, we, we just lift up the needs that we have. Every one of us has needs, things that are on our minds, um, sometimes small things, sometimes really big things concerns we have, it may be a way in which we have failed, and we need forgiveness, it may be uh, a problem. 
problem we're facing and we don't know the answer. Um, maybe a broken relationship where we need you to step in and bring healing. Whatever it is that's troubling our hearts this morning, we just give it to you and we thank you so much. And there's nothing too big or too small for you. And we thank you for the Holy Spirit who brings our request to you. And even when we don't know how to, to voice them correctly, he is so good at interpreting what we say. together and continue to worship as we sing and as the ushers come to receive our tithes and offerings. <coughs>
come to you today with thankful spirits. There's so much to be thankful for. Thankful waking up this morning and being able to get here safely, but more importantly for, for who you are, your, your love and your grace towards us. And we just ask that you, you open up our hearts and our minds to the sermon that Pastor Chris is about to speak and that you, you send us out with
devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Can you hear me all right? There we go. Okay. All right. Well, uh, <clears throat> again, thanks everybody for coming. We're so good to, so glad to have you at uh, services today. And, and I want to welcome you this morning. If you've not been around for a couple of weeks, uh, or maybe this is your first time here, uh, we are in a series called Gratitude, Living a Life of Thankfulness. And we're in part three of that series. Um, and in week one, just to kind of give everybody a little bit of a, a recap in week one, we talked about fundamental gratitude. Um, the fundamental gratitude has to do with a focus on the giver, not necessarily the gift. Fundamental gratitude must, in fact, be focused on the giver of the gift, not the gift, because the gift, in fact, tells a little bit about, and actually tells quite a bit about, the giver. Week one was all about gratitude toward God, God as the ultimate gift giver, and what the gift of Jesus says about God, the giver of this precious, precious gift that we have. A, a cousin to that, which should mean a lot to all of us, is, is, is what, what the gift says about the giver also says a little bit about what the, the giver thinks about you. How this, this God who is loving and awesome and compassionate, it says something about him, but, but the gifts that he gives also says something about you and, and about me. Again, God is the giver, giver of good and perfect gifts. It communicates that God is good and perfect, but what it also communicates is, is that when God looks at you, he sees a good and perfect gift. Not because you're necessarily good and certainly not because you're necessarily perfect. But when he looks at you, he sees his good and perfect gift, Jesus. That's fundamental gratitude. That he sees you as if he's seeing Jesus. Now, last week, Pastor Mark shared about the nemesis of gratitude, the grumble. Uh, and, and it's the most natural, sometimes the most human thing for us to do, to do the opposite of gratitude, and that is to grumble. Nothing ever measures up. Nothing ever is going to go right. We can get so inward focused that we miss the blessing of God because we expect something different. We expect something more. But not only do we expect it, we also think we deserve it and when gifts whether they're from God or whether they're from others when they don't meet our expectations when they don't match what we think we deserve we grumble and we complain I'm so glad that that's not something I struggle with <laughs> Pastor Mark reminded us that a change of spirit must occur within us in order for us to have this, this attitude of, of gratitude, we have to be submissive on our side of things. But the Spirit of God has to move within our hearts, and we have to be, we have to be cognizant of that. We have, to, we have to have that willingness to be uh, who he wants us to be and, and to see things through the lenses that he wants us to see them. And, 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 and we have to learn how to not grumble and truly be a people of thanksgiving and have thanksgiving in our hearts. And speaking of thanksgiving... Next week is Thanksgiving, and I'd like to take a little survey, and I think um, this is something we've never tried before. He's going to click on, okay, so um, I, I, I'm not trying to uh, uh, persuade you one way or the other, uh, but ham is already on the list as uh, number one. So um, if you have a phone, we're going to do this. We've never done this before, and you can click on that QR code. It's also on your sermon insert um, on the back, there's a QR code. You can click on there, and, and we're going to vote. 
Okay, here are your options. I know you can't read it up here, but I'll read it for you. Which do you prefer at Thanksgiving, ham, turkey, deer, or chicken? Well, we're not there yet. Be patient. Be patient. What do you prefer, ham, turkey, deer, or chicken? Okay, oh, turkey's coming up there. Oh, now it's back down. We got some ham. Keep going. All right. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, my goodness. All right. Well, we, uh, we're going to say it's statistically relevant. Turkey is the winner. Turkey is the winner. So uh, turkey, everybody likes turkey? Okay, all right. Well, you know, just don't come to my house then. That's, what, that's really what this is about. Okay, uh, TJ, let's see. if we, Can we go to the next one? Just click the, where it says next. Okay, what Thanksgiving desserts? Did we skip over one? I think we skipped over one. Go back. Can you? Is that it? Okay. So what, what do you, th okay, go back. Sorry, I messed it up. Okay, it's, a, it's in a different order on my sheet. What Thanksgiving desserts do you prefer? Pumpkin pie, apple pie, pecan pie, or toll house pie? And I'm sorry if it's pecan pie. I messed it up. Pecan versus pecan, it's all the same to me. You vote, vote your heart. Pecan pie, apple pie, pecan, toll house pie, which is a cookie pie. All right, we're going to say it's statistically relevant. Pumpkin pie is the big winner. I can't believe it. All right. So I've never seen pumpkin pie get an applause, but okay. All right, let's go to the next one, TJ. What do we have? What sides do you prefer? What sides do you prefer? Dressing or stuffing? Sweet potatoes, you know, with the marshmallows on it. Mashed potatoes, green bean casserole with the onion stuff on it. Okay, what do we got here? All right. Our, oh, I thought green bean casserole was going to make a run. Mashed potatoes it is. All right. All right. It's close. Close second. All right, TJ, go ahead to the next one. I think this might be our last one. Is there another one? Oh, here we go. What entertainment do you prefer at Thanksgiving? Football. The Thanksgiving parade. It's the Christmas start. Uh, Die Hard is up there. Uh, and then a nap. What do you prefer? What's number one in your heart? Okay, football. Looks like football. All right. Football is the winner. All right. Give yourself a round of applause for being able to figure this out. Good job. And I want, I just, you know, uh, who out there is the 3.9 who said die hard? Raise your hand. Come on, don't be scared. The three point. Okay, a couple of you. Brentley, all right. All right, good. Well, um, it's fair to say that I have some expectations about Thanksgiving. Um, and uh, if I don't get those things at Thanksgiving, I pout. Uh, I, I, I quietly go into the corner or into another room. I don't say anything because, you know, if you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. So I just sit, and I, my wife says, at least, I pout. And if she says so, it must be so. Um, but Thanksgiving is really one of those rare holidays that has a, sort of a singular focus. And the focus is to unite us in a spirit of gratitude. And if we're honest, most of us in this room um, will not have to choose between dressing or sweet potatoes. We'll have both. We'll, we'll not have to choose between apple pie and pumpkin pie. We'll probably have both. You'll not have to choose between the parade or football. You can choose between any number of televisions in your house, or you can watch the parade on your television and the football game on your phone. So there's really no reason to grumble about any unmet expectations at Thanksgiving. So we might as well focus on what really matters then. And what's really brought us together, at least what it's supposed to have done, is bring us together to, to be in a spirit of gratitude. And I would submit that praise and thanksgiving should draw people from all walks of life into sacred community relationships with gratitude in their hearts. Praise and thanksgiving should draw people into a sacred community relationship with each other but this should this should especially be true in Jesus church 
One of the principal marks of Jesus' church, the people who claim to believe in him and the ones that claim to follow him, one of the principal marks or characteristics of, of Jesus' followers is to have a heart of gratitude. Yet poll after poll after poll suggests that, that what those outside the faith experience when they, have, when they have dared to engage and participate in the life of the church or from those who were a part of the church but then later chose to walk away from the church, what they have witnessed is a divided church. They've seen division and poll after poll indicates that that's why they left. Now, I would say this, without any fear of embellishment whatsoever, in 40-plus years of being a follower of Jesus, spending most of my days deeply committed to his church, I can say that it's, uh, it's unbelievable how much we can come up with to divide us. And that shouldn't be the case. Furthermore, many of the youth, we've talked about this a few weeks ago, many of the, the youth who who are leaving our churches in mass, one of the reasons they leave, they cite over and over again, is the division that they see in the church. Now, they may have different and varied reasons and for, for viewing that division and how they feel or think about that, and it may be very different things that are dividing them, but division is at a, a premium core value that they see, boy, I don't want to be a part of that because I see division in the church. Well, this is a huge concern, and it goes all the way back to the early church. As Edie read in Acts chapter 2, 42 through 47, this early church devoted themselves to each other as they devoted themselves to God. One team, one fight. But that word devoted kind of gnaws at me. Here's what that word devoted means. Devoted is to be given over to. In other words, you have yielded yourself. You have given yourself over to something. Devoted is loyal and loving. The early church was so grateful for God's grace that they gave themselves over to God. And they gave themselves over to each other in that order. Thankfulness so reigned in their hearts that it shaped every aspect of their lives and bound them together. Billy Graham once said, A spirit of thankfulness is one of the most distinctive marks of a Christian whose heart is attuned to the Lord. The English word for gratitude stems from the Latin word gratia, which means to give thanks. The Bible takes this one word definition further. In the Bible, gratitude is the word eucharista, which stems from the word charis, which means grace. I think, TJ, those are right next to each other. You can put the other one up. Eucharista comes from the word charis, which means grace. Charis or grace is a favor, an act of goodwill and loving kindness for which we do not deserve. We don't deserve God's grace. We don't deserve God's loving kindness. We don't deserve his goodwill, and that's why it's grace. Eucharista is an offering of thanks out of the abundance of grace that has been shown to us. It is to give thanks to the Lord with pleasure and delight because we have received delight and pleasure from his grace or charis. Eucharista is not a horizontal practice. It's a reciprocal practice. It's a cycle of giving and receiving all at the same time. It is grace abounding. The Bible tells us that God does not desire sacrifice for sacrifice's sake, but that he delights in our expressions of praise and adoration, which is an outward expression of what is going on in our hearts. God delights in our expressions of praise and adoration. To express something means that there's something that's coming out of you. It's either a, something that's vocal or something in terms of an activity. It's an expression of praise and gratitude. It isn't just felt. It isn't just experienced in here. 
gratitude and thankfulness, especially to God. He delights it when we express that. In the early church, the Sabbath, like our Sunday, was the first day of the week. The services were not purposed to call the faithful to repentance or make them aware of their sin's magnitude. The sole purpose for gathering was to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus through communion, the Eucharist. You can see that word charis right in the middle of it, grace. It was a service of remembrance and gratitude for God's grace. And every Sabbath, there was communion, and communion was served. The Eucharist was the DNA of the early church worship. Instead of early, early believers saying, well, we're, we're going to Sabbath this morning, or we're going to church this morning, they would say, we're going to the Eucharist today. And it wasn't until the Protestant Reformation in the 16th century that Christian worship stopped centering itself around communion as its highest act of worship. Acts 2, 46 and 47 says that they were, those gatherings were happy occasions, that they ate together with glad and generous hearts. They praised God and they had goodwill and favor among all the people and they kept everybody in mind. Every Sunday was an Easter celebration. The Eucharist began by giving thanks before taking communion, believers would offer gratitude to God, recounting the links of his acts and testifying to the power of the Holy Spirit. Following the communion meal, believers shared in a second round of gratitude prayers. And after these prayers, they moved into a time of caring for one another's physical needs by taking up an offering and sharing of their resources, each together to build one another up. The Eucharist bound them together. It was what they had in common. They had glad and sincere hearts because each one of them had experienced from God the Father the very same grace as the other one had. They each had experienced the loving kindness of God, which was something that they did not deserve, nor had they earned. Gratitude to God united them together because thankful hearts build up relationships. It's true of our relationship with God, and it's true of our relationships with each other. Gratitude unites us, and that gratitude helps to build up a thankful heart, builds up relationships. But thanklessness, on the other hand, ruins relationships, and it can ruin a church. It weakens it and makes it less fit for service. You know, a unifying factor among believers is sharing a common purpose. And what ingratitude does, which is gratitude or thankfulness that's not expressed, ingratitude polarizes people and it individualizes their purposes. Everyone has their own pet rock and it's important that what you're interested gets a, a special place in the budget. It, we make sure that we end up with the right kind of airtime, everybody. And when fruitfulness from another ministry begins to be shared, rather than celebrating it, God, look what you've done through this ministry, we begin to say, well, what's really going on there? Because it's not our pet rock. We stop pulling in the same direction. When there are projects that we don't think are necessary, we, we pull other people aside and we say, you know, just like Pastor Mark mentioned last week, we invite them into the grumble with us. Our mission statement, and any mission statement really, is intended to bring people together in one joyful purpose. Ingratitude makes our purpose about fulfilling our individual needs rather than corporate purpose. Gratitude, on the other hand, frees us up to serve alongside others, many of whom are different than us. Different social backgrounds, different struggles, different races, different political interests, different uh, denominations. A heart of thankfulness toward God unites his people and frees us to serve the Lord as we serve others. And the world around us, especially the youth that are leaving the churches en masse, they can look at a church like that and say, how, how can these people who ought to hate each other, how can they work so well together 
and have so much love for each other? The simple and short answer to that is Jesus. We're so grateful for the love of Jesus that it brings us together and they will know we are Christians by our love. Ingratitude communicates that I don't see you, whereas gratitude communicates I do see you. At the heart of gratitude is recognition. Recognizing someone for their efforts, but most importantly, it communicates recognition that they are seen for who they are. Mutual recognition unites us. I have a cousin who's a jerk. We won't mention his name, but for the purposes of this, we'll call him jerk face. He's four years older than me. In fact, when we were kids, he tried to chop off my foot with an axe. It's true. I was stumped by it. Well, almost. <laughs> terrible. Terrible. That's terrible. I'm sorry. As you can imagine, we weren't very close. He grew up in a home where love, affection, gratitude, those things weren't expressed very well. Honestly, it, they probably weren't expressed at all. I would dare say that he never, never heard the words, I love you, from his parents. Uh, as I mentioned, I didn't like being around him very much, but I'll never forget one Thanksgiving. We're gathered at uh, Grandma's house. Grandma and Grandpa lived in this itty-bitty little shack of a home, really. And there was about 30 of us there in this tiny little home. And uh, it was just pouring down rain. It was just coming down in buckets. And my older cousin, my girl cousin, was sort of bemoaning the fact that she was going to have to leave. She was in her late teens, and she was bemoaning the fact that she was going to have to go out to the car in the rain. And, and that was going to mess up her hair and her makeup. And, and, and cousin jerk face, overhearing this conversation unexpectedly went out and um, got her an umbrella and brought it up to her to everyone's surprise. Maybe they thought it was an axe. <laughs> My other cousin, who had brought the umbrella to, simply said, thank you, jerk face. That was very courteous of you. Here's what happened. The jerk changed. Someone noticed and appreciated him, and he was just different after that. Suddenly, this person who had experienced only rejection, suddenly this person had experienced acceptance. Someone had appreciated him. It made a difference in his life. In fact, when we were in high school, and some of his classmates wanted to pick on me because they were seniors and I was a freshman, he stood up for me. Not only did he stand up for me, he got his friends to stand up for me too. Unspoken gratitude feels like rejection, but appreciation, spoken gratitude, feels like acceptance. And isn't that what we all want? To be valued and appreciated for our authentic selves? My cousin felt acceptance for perhaps the first time in his life, and it was transformative, which is all the more reason why gratitude must be expressed, not just felt. It communicates a sort of holistic value. Everyone benefits from gratitude. At the heart of gratitude is recognition, recognizing someone for their efforts, but most importantly, it communicates recognition that they are seen for who they are. Mutual recognition unites us. In his book, Out of the Shadows, Patrick Carnes lists four core beliefs of a person lost to addiction. Did you hear what I said? A core belief at the very heart of who they are. A core belief is this. People wouldn't love me if they knew the truth about who I really am. Can you imagine feeling that way? Having to live in secret, always waiting for the other shoe to drop, 
someone's going to find out. A second core value is that they only think that the thing that they can trust and the only thing that they can trust is their addiction. Gratitude and ingratitude are determinable factors in a relationship. It determines how much of you you are willing to trust in someone else, and it determines how much he or she is willing to put their trust in you. Gratitude is a great signal that you are a person of compassion and peace who can be trusted. You see me. When we recognize people, when we're grateful for who they are and for their efforts, small and big, even when they are trying really hard and even in, if their efforts fall short and, and, and undeserving of grace and, 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 and even when they fail and, and it leads to sin, when we can live in the charis of God, the grace of God, and the undeserved grace of God, when we can live in that grace, when we can, we, we can begin then to show grace to other people, we can begin then to extend grace to people who don't think that they deserve it. Recognizing people, celebrating them, encouraging them, being thankful for them can be transformative and it brings us together through the bonds of peace. To celebrate their efforts, even in their failure, undoes the shackles of shame and discouragement that the devil uses to keep them in bondage. We celebrate athletes all the time. A baseball player fails 70% of the time, a good one. Many Cardinals fail 80% of the time. I, I, just, I just saw uh, in the box scores Steph Curry, who's kind of the leading, um, the talking heads think he's probably going towards an MVP type season, was 8 for 21. Very good basketball players, if they're, if they're lucky, get 50% of their shots to fall. Did you know Bruce, Springs, Bruce Springsteen never had a number one hit? Neither has Bob Dylan, The Grateful Dead, or Led Zeppelin, and a host of others who would surprise you as rock legends. After service, tell your teen who all those people are. I remember buying my first tape. I was so excited about it. I, I, uh, after service, explained to your team what a tape is. <laughs> I, I remember getting this tape, and I was really excited to listen to the whole album, only to realize that two of the songs were good, and the other eight were trash. <laughs> listen, people don't always hit their mark, do they? And yet we celebrate some... And we destroy others. And the people we tend to destroy the most are the ones that are closest to us. When we recognize people, their efforts big and small, when we live with a thankful heart in the grace of Jesus, it unites us. It builds trust upon trust upon trust. We begin to see each other, really see each other. When I can see you for who you really are, it breaks the bondage of shame because it somehow communicates that God, too, really sees you. And God really knows who you are. As we mentioned earlier and we mentioned last week in week one, unspoken gratitude feels like rejection. But spoken gratitude feels like appreciation. And appreciation feels like acceptance. If you can accept me and not reject me, then maybe Jesus can too. And that makes all the difference. And it will add up to a number who are daily led to Jesus. Daily, those who are being saved just goes and goes and goes. Well, the early church didn't wait for there to be division, they came together and gave thanks to God and thanks to and for each other when they gathered. And so this morning, I would like for us to do something that is um, uncomfortable. Um, and I acknowledge that ahead of time, that it's uncomfortable. 
But the Bible says that when the people gathered together, they broke bread together and they gave thanks. And so this morning, what I want to invite you to do is to break bread together, together and to give thanks. I know it's uncomfortable. And, and I want to encourage you, if, if, if this is maybe some, you know, you've never been here before, you don't know these people, it's okay to just sit there and, and watch and observe and, and maybe give thanks in your own heart. Uh, maybe you would even take a risk and, and go around and, 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 and give thanks to somebody. And maybe you're just not one of the bread takers, you don't want to take a, a bread from somebody, but, but you could just say the words, thank you, and and so what, what I want to invite you to do is you'll, you'll have a piece of bread and the ushers will come in just a few moments and they'll pass the bread out. And, and what we'll do is you'll take this bread and you'll go over to somebody and Pastor Mark's going um, gonna to help me here and I'm going to offer a piece of bread to him and he's going to pull a piece off um, and I'm just going to say, Pastor Mark, thank you. And you can, you can say more than that if you want. I want to say thank you for helping me through this transition over these last three years. Um, the humility you've shown has just been incredible, and I thank you for that. And he's going to eat that bread. And if he wants to offer me bread in return and say thank you um, for <laughs> <laughs> thank you for allowing me to retire uh, someday, uh, see my grandkids more, whatever, you know, he can do that as well. And, and we're not going to do it for a long, long time. We're going to put five minutes on the clock here in just a little bit. But praise and thanksgiving should draw people into sacred community relationships. That's the last point that TJ is going to put up. It repeats the first one. Praise and thanksgiving should draw people into sacred community. And so I'm going to invite you in just a moment. The ushers are going to take the, and deliver the bread to you. Um, and, and when it's time to, to walk around the sanctuary, don't limit yourself to your pew. And just offer a piece of bread to somebody. Let them pull it off. Don't pull it off for them. And just say thank you. And, and, and maybe it could just be as simple as thank you. That's just fine. Uh, but we want to make this a, a, a place of sacred community. Um, and so we're going to do that today. And so as the ushers, if you'd come forward and uh, take... Uh, take one, and there'll, there'll be um, one in each aisle. There'll be two here and one on the outside, and they're just going to deliver it. And then when we get back, um, TJ, when we get back to you, you can put the five minutes uh, up, and we'll begin to meander around together and give thanks to God and to each other.
share with one another, and pass the peace and say thanks. And five minutes later, we'll dismiss.
well, I don't want to, uh, I hate to break up uh, a good thing, but I said we would do five minutes, and we're going to stick to that, and uh, this is, but this is just a springboard, right? It's a springboard to a life of thanksgiving. At least that's what I hope that it will be. It will be a springboard into us being very cognizant of the fact that we have so much in our lives to be thankful for and that we need to be eager to say thank you. We need to be aware of our surroundings and aware of the people and say thank you and have grateful hearts. And I want to thank you for just participating. I'll, I'll tell you, I, 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 God gave me this idea I think on Thursday or Friday, and I, I said, no, I'm not going to do it. People think it's just too weird, and you may still be there. <laughs> but, um, and I, I said, you know, I told Leah, I think, I feel like God wants me to do it. And I said, no, I'm not going to do it. 3.45 this morning, I woke up, and my stomach was all, you know, oh, it's not too late for me to pull out. You know, I don't know what I would do with, you know, 25 loaves of bread, but I'd figure it out. <laughs> uh, but thank you for just engaging in that and trusting um, us to just have this moment together and so appreciate it. So let's stand together. We're going to close in song and then I'll do a prayer at the end and let's just uh, let's sing with full hearts here this morning. There is an everlasting kindness you lavished on us when the To rescue the lost, you called the sheep without a shepherd to leave their distress. For your streams of forgiveness and the shade of your rest. And with compassion for the hurting, you reached out your hand as the behind the eyes of sorrow and shared in our tears heard the sigh of the weary let the children draw near what boundless love what fathomless grace you have shown beneath the cross of Calvary and gazed on your face at the thorns of oppression and the wounds of disgrace for surely you have borne our suffering and carried our grief as you pardoned the scoffer and showed grace to the
words with me. Father, we are we're trying 